these things are very, very much a, a big part of all health problems. So I always say to people, if you've got a health problem that doesn't seem to want to go away, do a parasite cleanse. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Grimerica show. Uh, we're going to be chatting with Chris Culler a little bit later uh, about... K- si- Kaler. Kaler. I just knew it wasn't Keller. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to be talking about sacred geometry and quantum healing and all sorts of fun stuff. But first, as always, Graham, I like my shorts tight Dunlop. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. I don't know. If you don't understand, that's fine. I just, I'm sick of those floppy cargo sh- shorts. That's all. I I'm, sh- I'm short, right? So, like, if things flop around, that looks like I just have. You, you know, look I'm... like a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> so the... You need to send a pic. That... I will send, I'll send, send that... a pic. In that, that kind of attire. Just so our listeners know, that cackle in the background is Red Pill Junkie from Mexico. I read. I read. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah it's it good has. to have you. Good to have you here. I yeah, like guys. Every time Graham wears the shorts, I call him on it. Today I started laughing as soon as he got out of the car. <laughs> hey, it took me a while to get comfortable enough to wear these things. Okay. Darren's lucky I'm not wearing my yoga shorts to the studio. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, what do you want me to do? Turn the volume up on your computer. Okay. So, uh, so why don't we start with a, an email here that I have? Uh, actually, it's Facebook feedback, but it kind of would be something we can get Red's opinion on as well. And then when my computer dies, then we can move on to other okay. stuff. Is that good? Yeah, okay. we should yeah, do that. Sounds good. So this is uh, Facebook feedback. Um, hey guys, hey dudes. I'm Aiden Farron, a 21 year old living in Princeton, New Jersey. In recent years, I've gradually been getting more and more interested in all things occult, which has led me to a fascination with ancient monuments. There have obviously been a number of recent discoveries that are groundbreaking and continuing to pile on the evidence for ancient civilizations on Earth and maybe elsewhere. Example, Ganong Padang, Gobekli Tepe, and the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. But I just came across something that's really making me wonder what's real and what's not. Just a moment ago, I was listening to an episode of the Earth Ancients podcast when something in the conversation made the Bosnian Pyramid pop into my, my head. I was at the computer, so I followed the mental tangent and started looking at some aerial images, which I had seen before. Then I read the corresponding Wikipedia page, which has the seemingly condescending title, Bosnian Pyramid Claims. In my previous encounters with the Bosnian Pyramid, encounters via the internet, needless to say, I had always thought that this was for sure a pyramid. I saw that there was constant work being done on the site to excavate and discover what more could be discovered. But after reading the Wikipedia article on it, it would seem as if the whole thing is a foolish mistake by Samir or a hoax, as the official statement asserts. Now, I know there are people who would say, listen, man, the establishment is just suppressing evidence of prehistoric civilizations. Look at the damn thing. It's obviously a pyramid that has been covered up by years and years of dirt and whatnot. But I mean, what's really going on here? Now, I'm rewatching this video of the head archaeologist for the Bosnian Pyramid, and everything in the video still gives me an inkling that it's real. What do you have to say about this? Do you personally believe the official line of that's not a pyramid? And Samir Osmanagic. Osmanagic or something. Yeah, Osmanagic is a quack. I'm fascinated to hear your response because up until this moment of reading the slanderous wiki page, I had believed it was a real ancient monument discovery. Thanks. That's uh, from Aiden Farron. He says, there's lots more, more videos of the discoverer, Samir O, inside the alleged pyramid in tunnels and whatnot, giving tours of the rooms within the structure. Some of those rooms have vibratory resonance technology, which he explains to the tourists is connected to a flow of water underneath the pyramid, similar to many other pyramid structures all over the world. The water running underneath and stuff. I mean, so it really seems to me like it's a legit ancient pyramid, but I'd like to see what you think. And then he sent us some videos of the tunnel walking through and stuff like that. So anyways, uh, what do you think, Red? I don't know. I'm still sitting on the fence when it comes to the Bosnian pyramid. Wow, really? You know? Yeah, I mean, you guys um, interviewed uh, Robert Schock 
who was in uh, 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 one of the last Paradigm Symposiums. And, and I don't know if you guys uh, asked him uh, his opinion about the Bosnian pyramid, but he is one of the skeptics of uh, Osma, what you might call it, claims, you know, with regards to this uh, so-called ancient monument. He thinks that it's not a man-made structure, that it is a natural feature. But then you get things might get a bit complicated because... Okay, maybe it's a natural feature that it was uh, maybe shaped by by humans at some point in the in the past, or if it wasn't, it sure has been you know manipulated and modified now by by these teams of um, uh, Bosnian uh, amateur archaeologists who claim that this is a uh, you know the oldest pyramid in the world so yeah uh, with regards to the bosnian pyramid to tell you the truth i'm i'm on the fence but i'm really like more moving toward the idea that it's um, that it's not a true a true pyramid you know but i'm still you know willing to be uh, convinced otherwise you know yeah and i think robert shock is the type of guy that that if he if he saw something convincing, he would change his mind as well. But I tend to kind of agree with you that you know Shock is 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 bucked the mainstream enough, and he's 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 the one yeah. talking about other sites like Penang Penang and Gunang Penang and and but Gobekli Tepe. So yeah, it's it's one of those things where I kind of trust. I've met, I mean, I've met Robert personally, and I I I think he's I like his character I, and I trust what he says and that he's not bullshitting. Um, yeah, and this is also an interesting uh, uh, observation of how there is even dissent in the ranks of uh, people in the alternative history uh, uh, camp. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, let's talk about another very interesting um, feature that some people claim, you know, is a very ancient monument and some people think it's just a natural feature. And, and, and I'm talking about the Yonaguni, you know, as a, a underwater structure that some people think is, you know, a very, very ancient te- kind of temp- the stone temple or something like that, a, a megalithic structure. But... Uh, Robert Schock, then again, again, you know, with his expertise in geology, he uh, is not convinced by by, by, uh, by this claim. You know, he thinks that it's as as weird and you know artificial looking as it may be. And I'm sure that uh, some of our listeners, maybe all of them, have have seen uh, 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 on Google. Uh, uh, photographs of this uh, Jonaguni uh, uh, anomaly, let's call it like that, you know, and it looks With the steps, really right. Yeah, I mean, is, is that the one outside uh, Japan? Or my thoughts are yeah, uh, on the Okinawa uh, uh, Bay or something like that. Yeah, my thoughts are bullshit and real. Speculative. Look, I remember talking about. This very thing about John Aguni with John Ward on the very first Paradigm Symposium, you know, back when we still didn't know each other so well. And I remember him uh, telling me that in his opinion as an archaeologist, uh, John Aguni didn't look like a temple. It looked to him like a quarry. You know, maybe it's like something that where people, ancient people might have gone to quarry it the stone that might have been used uh, to, I don't know, to um, do something else, you know, build some, stru- uh, some, some structures. And I think that wa- that was his opinion based of, of his y- years of uh, researching with his uh, wife, Maria, this site in, in Egypt, uh, Gegelb, what is the name? Gebel El Sicilia or something yeah, like Bilal that? Yeah. Gebel El Sicilia. Yes, thank you. You know, and this is a, a very ancient Egyptian quarry, 
uh, where uh, you know uh, ancient people, you know the Egyptians, went to 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 acquire the stone, the stones they needed to build their temples. You know, so yeah. I think that John's observation, based on that, you know, are, are, are worth considering. Yeah, definitely. And I, I want to thank the guy for for emailing that for sure. But I want to expand on on Red's thing about underwater stuff. I think that that's where. That's where the evidence is going to start coming from now. I just Definitely. came across this article. Yeah, well, it's only in like 60 feet of water or something, too. Like, that shit. Yeah. I think that's what, that's one of the problems that Robert pointed out, you know, that uh, could be, when could it be comes re to... Yeah. Recently, more recently covered up, really. Yeah. Not, that, not like the sunken city in Cuba, which I was going to mention. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. And I'm, I'm, I'm stand corrected. That's the problem with the, with the one in Cuba, that it is way too deep. You know, yeah, so yeah. Really, uh, but yeah. they're still saying, like, why did this thing, it, it, they discovered it, like, in 2001 and just kind of disappeared off the radar. And there's yeah. speculation that it was suppressed, but some people, you know, some guy says it just went cold and that experts weren't convinced, but, I mean, the pictures are pretty... Well, how you deep know, was it? it? How deep? It's like six, deep. 600 feet or something like that? And they, they say it's, like, 50,000 years old, like this one. Like yeah. Way, it goes, like... Way back from the Atlantis, kind of like eleven, twelve thousand years old thing. There would be a lot well, of now that, ice for that to be at all. Now that the United States has reestablished diplomatic relationships with Cuba, you know, maybe something uh, more can be um, learned or, or investigated about this uh, 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 underwater anomaly. Yeah, and then there's the other one off the coast of uh, Sicily there, I believe. There's another one that's come up. So I yeah, think the it's, Mediterranean yeah. is just full of them. Yeah, so I think that's really going to propel this um, evidence forward. Mm -hmm. The Mediterranean used to be a nice fertile valley. And the fucking yeah. water came up 400 feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy. Hmm. So yeah, what were you gonna say? Darren, I don't about think all that? Bosnia is. I think it's natural. Yeah, not a pyramid. Yeah, well maybe pyramid. it may be. A, yeah, well, a, a, something that kind of looked pyramid-like and may have been reshaped by ancient people to even to look by more like a pyramid. Maybe I don't know. I mean, uh, getting back again to Robert Shock. Uh, I remember this, uh, his research into the uh, uh, Egyptian Sphinx and how, you know, this, this wasn't like something uh, entirely built by man, you know, this was apparently some kind of uh, uh, ancient uh, ro uh, rock outcrop, you know, that was shaped by the wind and the rains or whatever to kind of looked like a lion, you know, maybe I'm sure that people in the Grand Canyon or, or other places will see uh, weird shapes in the rocks, you know, that may look like something or other. So uh, the idea is that ancient people uh, thousands and thousands of years ago found this uh, kind of lion looking uh, uh, giant stone and then kind of like built on it you know to to now to 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 create a true you know uh, the statue of a lion uh, which uh, uh, subsequently was then you know maybe hijacked or reshaped by other cultures you know now that will that will be the historical egyptians who would change the 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 head of the lion for the head of a human being you know Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. You think they had? Mm -hmm. You think they had a case of like five thousand year old pareidolia back then? Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, that's why we have things like star constellations. You know, I mean, this is an ability that I, that I think is inherent inherent of all in all human beings. Yeah, yeah. So what else is what else is going on with you? What's new, Red? You got some interesting stuff going on. You were on the Paracast the other day, which is which is great. Oh yeah, it was really, really fun. Something of a last minute request, you know, uh, and then we have a bit, uh, uh, some problems trying to, to, to connect, you know, I missed the deadline, we had to reschedule. And because of that, uh, I went completely unprepared, you know? 
<laughs> kind oh, of yeah. like it these. Sound like it. I was part of that whole fucking yeah, debacle. You were. Yeah, I yeah. remember you guys asking you to to please contact Gene, you know, to let him know that I wasn't going to make it. But anyway, it turned out to be one of the greatest uh, podcast or radio interviews I've ever done, you know, because the it uh, somehow we managed to veer the conversation, you know, from the typical ufological discussion that is characteristic with the Paracast. You know, I mean, Paracast, it's uh, most of the time they, they discussed uh, the UFO phenomenon. But with this uh, particular interview, we flowed or we sh- veered from UFOs to near-death experiences. And that managed to open open the discussion into fascinating territories. Yeah, that was great. You did a, you did a wonderful job. Yeah, thank you. How how is your uh, have you done, designed any t-shirts yet? How's that thing coming along? I'm in the middle of that, you know. I'm, hey, yeah, I thought you were sending pictures today. Yeah. I'm I'll send you pictures, guys. I'm still, you know, don't want to to discuss that oh. too much because No, no, it's okay. okay. It's okay, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, to the three or four, you know, guys who managed to actually listen to this <laughs> <laughs> podcast. <laughs> no, kidding. No, no, no. Uh, it's like it's seven. Just, yes. Okay. It's maybe 10 at most. My mom might yeah. download it twice, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is still something that is still in the works and is moving a bit slow, you know, because mainly because I'm really not devoting as much time as I should into it. But uh, I think by the time we guys see each other at the parallel symposium, I might be able to, to, you know, to reveal it to the world, you know, as it were. Nice. Well, I've got some on the, on the works too for Grimerica, but it's, uh, it's turning out to be more expensive than I thought. And now I'm, 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 now I'm, questioning whether I should go with this company in the States and just go try and go local again. But I just didn't have very good luck with that last time. And I just yeah. want, I want decent quality shirts as well. I don't want to just get those little rough cardboardy type shirts. Yeah, me too. Uh, I'm, I think I will be able to come up with a, a, a product or a really, really good quality, you know, nice. something that anyone anywhere in the world will say, man, I want that. Yeah, you know? that's good. Yeah. Well, why don't we just get Red to make him in Mexico? Is it? You well, must be cheap. Well, that's there. what I'm wondering if I should just send him yeah, well, and get him to do that. Yeah. Well, 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 we'll I do. mean, you will make Donald Trump mad, you know, saying how I'm <laughs> stealing the job of some good, hardworking American T-shirt company. Just, just, I, just, know, just don't say that you're selling of, them. I didn't think of Red when I said I was pro-Trump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't have to be climbing over the wall. <laughs> Fucking now. So, so just don't tell them you're you're selling t-shirts when you go over the border or like even yeah. giving them away. Just don't don't say that you have them there. Yeah, I'm going to say that these are all gifts and yeah. you know mo I, if I'm not careful, you know, I most of them are going to be given away for free. I'm like, which I it's fine, you know, I mean, you have to keep in order to receive in the end, you know, it's the law of the universe. Yeah, that's true. And so I here, don't have a problem with that. So yeah. let's, let's just touch on that for a sec. Cause we are again, we're talking about paradigm there, paradigm symposium on October 1st to 4th in Minnesota. Yay! And uh, if people want to call the number that I got right this time in the show notes, they can call Scotty. Uh, do you want, do you want to say the number now, Darren? Or? Or do, do you have it handy? <laughs> or are you do, asking if I have it handy? I, I have it handy actually. Go yeah. ahead. It's uh, 651 468 Eight one one five. That's Scotty Roberts, who's organizing Paradigm Symposium along with uh, John Ward and Micah Hanks. And uh, you get twenty percent off your weekend tickets if you mention Great America Show. So yeah, just wanted to get that in there before we forgot again. Yeah, and I think that you got uh, anyone listening and considering of, of going. You know, you need to really, you know, hurry up because not because there will be any shortage of of of, of tickets. You know, but because I think as Scotty warned on the, on the Facebook page of the Paradigm Symposium that the hotel they made an arrangement with, you know, they won't hold, you know, reserve, reservations for, for the symposium attendant, attendees, you know, forever. I think that they're going to, to uh, 
be over, you know, uh, I don't know, two, two weeks from now, something like that. Yeah, exactly. They can't just keep this block of hotels open until the last day. Yeah. So exactly. So, so, so book, so, your, book yeah. your hotels. And the good thing is it's in the, the conference is in the hotel. So it's all yeah. nice and tight in there, close to the airport, close to the mall of America. So it's, yeah. it's, it's really, and con- the idea really convenient. Is that, yeah. And the idea is for all of us to be in the same hotel. I remember, I think it was on the second Paradigm Symposium with, when some of our friends, you know, Candy and Carmen, you know, they went to a different hotel and it was kind of a, like a nightmare for them because they couldn't hang out with us, you know, uh, after night, you know, uh, in the hotel lobby, which is re- really where the action is. You know, at the Paradigm Symposium. Yeah, yeah. Bingo, right. bingo. So what mm-hmm. else do we have to... Oh, shit. Profound UFO quote of the week. Here we are, here we are. I wish I see here we are. You seem ill-prepared. Very. I wanted to get you before your shit died. Very ill-prepared. Actually, this could crash my computer What's your percentage right at? <laughs> are you still using a, a PC? Yeah, gra- grandma. It's at 16%. Before we could do any more, the Army, after conferring with U.S. officials, ordered the investigation stopped. That was Dr. Paul Santorini regarding UFOs seen over Greece in 1946. Oh, I didn't listen to the jingle uh, this time. You know, I, I always can, you know. You can't hear the jingle? No, I didn't. Oh, right. Oh, geez. Maybe, well, don't worry. Maybe it's not in the recording either. <laughs> can you hear it now? Nope. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right now, yeah. Anyways, oh, yeah, that's, that's, loud. Uh, that's your uh, that's your quote. Too loud now? That's your quote. Yeah. Nice work. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Speaking of UFOs, I, I recently... Seen one? Wrote something for how <laughs> I wished. Well, maybe, maybe I, 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 I wouldn't. I, 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 I recently, might have too on the weekend. Oh, so no, I no, no. I, I didn't see a UFO. No, no, I didn't see anything. I, I wrote something for Mysterious Universe about, well, not exactly UFOs, but about the phenomenon, as I like to call it, you know. And I, 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 I think it's an interesting uh, post. Um, regarding a, a sighting that happened in Spain in nice. the 1980s. Okay, why don't, we, this, why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we shut this down properly here, and we'll come right back? Okay, is that cool, Darren? Can no, it's like, just rocket. Really? Yeah. See how long this thing goes? Keep on rocket. Sorry, Red. Right, okay, world. so talk about that. Okay, so this is uh, um, an episode that was related to a uh, famous. A Hispanic UFO investigator by the name of Juan Jose Benitez, who is one of my, you know, favorite people in this field, you know, and unfortunately he's not as well outside of the Hispanic, uh, Spanish speaking nations as, it, as he should have. But anyway, so the idea is that uh, uh, the witnesses of this case, you know, who, uh, decided to wear and uh, remain anonymous for reasons that will be obvious you know so uh, they contacted him and they uh, uh, told him about this um, event that happened in, i think it was in 1980 or 1981 and the reason these guys decided to remain anonymous is because at that time they were members of a terrorist organ- organization wow yeah, they were part of this group called ETA, uh, which is a um, nationalist separat- separatist, um, you know, radical group um, in Spain. And I think they are also operating in France. You know, they, they, are, uh, uh, they have been trying to get uh, the Basque country, you know, which is a region from, from the Spanish kingdom, you know, to, to, to secede from Spain, you know, and become an independent, an independent country, you know. And uh, unfortunately, they have resorted to violent and, uh, and, and, and bloody, uh, bloody actions in order to, to do that. And that's why, you know, they're still considered a terrorist organization by Spain, France, the United Kingdom, and even the United, uh, the United States and the European Union, you know, is they were kind of like um, 
organization not unlike the the Irish IRA you mm -hmm. know remember how the United Kingdom also have a lot of problems with it you know a lot of bombings you know assass assassinations and kidnappings back in the 1970s and 80s the ETA uh, used this, the same kind of um, tactics you know so this is what kind of like the old school terrorism you know for people you know in the, in the younger audience listening to this you know the terrorism wasn't always about religious fanatics you know going and, and chopping up heads or, or burning people alive or or destroying you know 3000 year old temples in Syria you know this was you know a different kind of of, of terrorism maybe you could say that it was a more uh, you know understandable form of, form of terrorism because they had a very, you know... Political, uh, political. Well, this is more political. Yeah, a political ag agenda, right? But getting back to this uh, uh, UFO and, uh, or humanoid or alien event, which I read to um, a lot of detail because I want people to read it, these guys, after, after experiencing this incredible encounter, they completely changed their lives you know they they left these terrorist organizations you know they uh, you know they meant their ways you know they turned peaceful so that's why i decided to call this you know uh, when aliens stop terrorism because at least we have this one case in the annals of ufology in which there was you know at such a profound personal transformation in the witnesses, you know, that these, you know, actually prevented or ameliorated um, violence in our society. Nice. Wow. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you. So the aliens are all good, like Stephen Greer and he said he says then? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, you know. I was out for a Or maybe there are... Uh -huh. I was out for a C-SETI event on Saturday, and I saw I saw some flash bulbs in the sky. Definitely, that were strange and anomalous. So, yeah, it was good. And definitely, they were too organized by the C-SETI. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny. I mean, come on. I mean, there's a lot of people who think that Greer and his group they they literally set, you know, things like flares or something like that. Yeah, I don't buy it. This is a little, this is not, it's not like that, no. Well, or maybe I... No, just up in the middle of Calgary on Nose Hill Park, I don't see it. Yeah. Yeah. Or you're just fucking seeing shit. Flash flares, like... Seeing shit. Yeah. Maybe you're seeing... Tub says he sees shit all the time. I know, well, people do, yeah. Well, what do you mean? Tubs could be fucking nuts, though, too. So please describe these flashes. Well, it's just like, you know halfway up the sky and it's just a bright flash and you like a bunch of us saw it and then more i saw it happen like three or four times and then like the media no just How like a cat just like a like somebody was taking a picture with a bright okay. flash in the middle of the sky to you like it wasn't a oh. you know a plane flying by it wasn't a, it was just like this whoosh, like this bright flash what color was the, just the just flash? white white yeah Okay, was it really intense or, or, or yeah, pain? it was it was What's halfway up the sky. Is that like I don't I, I was trying to think of that 90 degrees, 45 degrees, 50 degrees? I was okay, thinking, so yeah, elevation, yeah, elevation, one, one o'clock, 12 o'clock, 10,000 feet, a million feet, a billion know. feet. I don't know, I don't know, you know, if 12 o'clock is right, uh, you then, know, it, then it's like if 12 o'clock is at the top, then it's like, yeah, and yeah. three o'clock is in the ground, yeah, it's about man. three o'clock, yeah. And in space, three o'clock is in the ground. No, man. no, then it's what? no three o'clock on the ground. Three o'clock's oh, the ground. Yeah. Then it's like one thirty, right? Like forty-five okay. degrees. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, somebody else saw flashes behind me, and then there was some other guys that saw some squirrely little lights uh, dodging back and forth up there that I didn't see, but. So anyways, it was, it was, it was a fun night, interesting people. And it was you know, definitely, I'm not saying I saw a, a craft or anything, but it saw some no. anom anomalous light. So who knows what it is, nice but I don't that. think it was like C. Seti putting like a hoax on. Okay. Definitely not. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was some kind of projected thought form, you know? you know, brought up or manifested by the intention of all the people who were gathered there, you know, with the intention of seeing something. 
that yeah, particular maybe. act. Yeah. I don't maybe. know. Yeah. I think that's a general idea, right? Yeah, it's harder to believe in aliens to me, but you know, mm-hmm. I believe our thoughts can You're a believer. Things. Through and through. Yeah, no. Anyway, you do believe that uh, people should support the show. So <laughs> that's right, I do, because my credit cards need my credit card needs to be paid off. Yeah, so. Uh... <clears throat> so help uh, check out support our value for value model uh, go to grandamerica.ca slash support help us say sponsor affiliate ad all that shit we don't have none of it website or in the podcast and uh, help us keep that going by checking out grandamerica.ca slash support there's a bunch of different options there to support the show monetarily uh, you can head over or, or you can head over to grandamerica.ca slash iTunes and leave us a review um, you can do the Stitcher review. You can tell a friend about the show. You can spam gram. All that shit helps. You can respond to some of the trolls on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> the YouTube trolls aren't bad. We do need some reviews though, because our last review was a one star. So, oh yeah, we need yeah. to we need to bounce back from that. Yeah, we're well, still doing. Wasn't good. that review written by Graham? <laughs> oh, yeah. No. <laughs> I, I'm, it's possible that is Darren's conspiracy yeah, theory it's possible that Graham left it <laughs> calling me a dull tool Graham's <laughs> doppelganger doppelgram yeah. Yeah, that's Graham's paid troll he could only afford one yeah. <laughs> yeah. that was my fiver contribution yeah. go on there and call Darren an idiot <laughs> <laughs> so yeah check that out Give us some support, and uh, yeah, be greatly appreciated. Oh yeah, I did want to mention. Mention. I think we were doing September was tell a friend, tell a friend about the show month, right? Is that your fucking shit, Diane? <clears throat> uh, I don't know. Is Red still there? Red, he's still yeah, there. Yeah, yes. yeah. We were making September tell a friend about the show month, and then I wanted to jump on to um, our buddy Slee Stack over uh, Matt. Yeah. yeah, he's uh, Matt's given. Uh, he did a post today about support for Grimerica. So basically, he's going to any for the month of September, all paid digital downloads of my band Slee Stack will directly benefit the Grimerica show. Grimerica is one of my wow. favorite podcasts, and they recently let me start publishing my blog posts over on their website. So I'd like to help them out a little more. Here's how it works wow. go to Go to sleestack.bandcamp.com, hang out and dig some tunes. If you like any of the music, click buy now under the digital album option. You can enter any amount from zero to a million dollars. That's awesome. Yes, you can get our music for free if you want. So basically they do value for value as well, which is super cool. Um, Your PayPal donation goes directly to Grimerica and you'll get an email to download the whole album in the format of your choice. And, and re- now you'll have some great f- tunes for the soundtrack of your next psychedelic excursion. Can and you listen to the, to this album? Yeah, you can. I don't have it. Oh, you know what I'll do is I'll play. Uh, I'll play it after in between this. Yeah, and I'll play. I'll Before. play music from it for this entire episode. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's great. Yeah, and, and check out Matt's yeah, blog perfect. as well on, yeah. on the website. He's yeah, been doing great and blog. Grace. I love it. Yeah. All right. And, uh, and right now we're going to run out of battery time right here, but we've got Chris Keller coming up about quantum energy healing and um, biofeedback and dowsing people's problems. And it's, uh, it's uh, very interesting, very interesting. And energy medicine. We talk a little bit about our medical system right now and, and how we got mm-hmm. into all this. I didn't get to play any jingles. Too bad, buddy. Oh, poor dar. <laughs> Oh my god. I just sneak one in. All right. Share the shell out of me. She shut it down. We'll, we'll, we'll call you back, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. So thanks to RPJ for joining us. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Do we have anything else to jump into? Uh, nope. Nothing I think else. that's it, man. No synchros, no nothing. No, no. I think that's it. No, I had everything planned uh, just to crash there at the last second. and <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Okay, guys, enjoy the chat with uh, Chris, and we'll see you in the outro.
Okay, guys, in Grime America tonight, we're going to be chatting with Chris Keller, a fellow Canuck. Um, but yeah. first, how's it going, buddy? How's hey. it going? Pretty yeah, good. It's going really good, thanks. That's yeah, good. Yeah, so Chris, we've got Chris here to talk about uh, all kinds of good stuff like radionic biofeedback and quantum healing and uh, sort of the energy medicine type stuff. He's got a, a business and a website there, Chris Keller Holistic. Um, I don't want to get too much into it without letting him chime in. So welcome to the show, Chris. Thanks for your patience tonight with all this uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Been there, done that. Yeah, it's like it's it's all these new challenges. I don't know if it's sometimes it's a cord, sometimes it's a weird Skype connection, but uh, we're here now finally. I'm blaming Skype trying to shut us down. I've had <laughs> enough of our shit. <laughs> so how are you doing, Chris? I'm I'm doing really good. Skype is is a really good thing to blame it on because you know what Skype can be as unreliable as as a fart. You know it's <laughs> it's just one of those things you have to deal with on the internet. Yeah, that's true. I've actually been meaning to try out the new Mega one. I'd like to do some trials with that and see how it runs. The only problem with that is then you're telling all your guests to download some new software. Yeah. So do you, did you say something about you do your own uh, your own radio show too, Chris? Yeah, I've got my own radio show every second Wednesday on uh, Pyramid One Network, and, and it is tomorrow night at, at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Pyramid One Network, Okay. Quantum View with Chris Kaler. Kaler, okay. Ooh, I think I said Keller. And how, how, do you find, uh, how do you find that going? How long have you been doing that for? I've been doing that for about a year. I've been doing internet radio interviews for a good five, six years. And, and uh, you know, the internet radio scene is, is a lot bigger than a lot of people think. A lot of people think that it's just, you know, something that the odd person listens to. But, you know, worldwide, I'm, I'm finding that the internet scene is huge because you're, you're, you're out of the mainstream. You're, you're hitting stuff that the, the mainstream does not dare even uh, want to touch. So, so you can you can get an entertaining show that's going to talk about things like like reptilians and aliens and ET and you know from from A to Z and beyond. Uh, you're going to find it on internet radio. Yeah, that's yeah, that's crazy. That's so. Do you find that that people are still um, like? Do you also do podcast formats as well, or do you find there's a big difference there between people like actually wanting to listen live or go on demand afterwards? I'm finding that that the most reactions I'm getting are from podcasts. I'm getting uh, people calling in and booking appointments and asking questions, you know, that from a radio show I've done two years ago. Wow. So oh, okay, okay. Phenomena, the podcast phenomena is is a lot bigger than, than the live. And the live is fantastic because you can take callers coming in. You can do the chat room. And, and, and the live thing is really cool because you know it's live because you, you screw up and, and you can you can tell, right? Right, right. So do you, so you have a set schedule, right? Like you do yours every second Wednesday, like you said, right? Every second Wednesday, yes, yeah, it's yeah. set schedule. Yeah, yeah. See, that's our challenge with. Uh, we run on America time, <laughs> so we're all over. We're all over the maps. Like we have an interview with Rick Simpson coming up, who's the guy that uh, what what would you call him, Darren, the inventor of that uh, Phoenix Tears, that uh, cannabis oil, and he's definitely one of the first. Yeah, I would I would call him the, at the least, chemist, or... if not the if not the inventor, then the. Uh, the yeah. first real spokesperson for it. So we have that show at midnight our time, which is like two o'clock Eastern. So, so we're all over the map. It's a good place to be, all over the map. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so tell tell us a bit about um, how you got started into the, in this uh, in this healing. The the whole healing thing happened. It, it was, it's it's a really interesting story. Let me start from the beginning. I spent about 28 years in the printing industry, running large printing presses uh, in, a, in a newspaper and a, a sheet-fed commercial shop. I was in management, and I was I was married, at, you know, at, at the time. And my wife at the time got ill, and mm -hmm. she ended up succumbing to to her illness. Uh, the illness was called scleroderma. Okay. So, so when that happened, um, at the age of, of 47. My financial planner looked at me and says, okay, Chris, take a look at your portfolio. Why don't you stop working for a while and enjoy life for a little bit? So I took his advice. And, you know, long story short, one door closes, another door opens. Mm -hmm. I met somebody who does this type of work in the alternative realm. And I took a, an, an immediate interest to it. For some reason, I just had to do it. I just had to be there, had to do it. So 
th this this guy took me under his wing, doing muscle testing and testing for herbs and 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 you know uh, learning how to work intuitively, and I I found I was picking it up very quickly. I was able to catch on quite fast, and I started meeting other people very quickly in this industry uh, in Alberta, Canada, and, and uh, BC, who work with radionics and sacred geometry tools and different forms of, of muscle testing. And I just started taking it all in and, and learning it. And I saw one guy in Alberta, his name is Bevan Saylor, in, in Lacombe, Alberta, and uh, mm. I, I, I looked at what he was doing. He had a business. He had an office. He had a clinic. And I thought, you know what? I could do this. I've got the financial backing to do it. I bet you any money I, I could set something up and help people with their health problems, make a living out of it, and have some fun. And, you know, here I am today. I've been doing this about nine years. And I've got a clinic in Winnipeg uh, in, in a healthcare facility. And it's pretty much fashioned after this fellow's clinic. And... I'm working with people all over the world. When you're working with energy, when you're working with, with uh, the quantum force that's all around us, when you're working with source energy, it, it's you can do it on Skype, you can do it on the telephone, you can have people in your office. It's very rare for me to have somebody in my office from Winnipeg. 99.9% .9 of all my clientele is in other cities, other countries, all around the world. And it, it's growing into a phenomenon that is actually working and I've developed a system where using a pendulum, using a series of charts and, and using my open mind to look for certain problems. So let's say you have diabetes or you have asthma or you have fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. You have some kind of illness where the medical system just hasn't got a clue what it is. So right. they start throwing pills at you. What I'm able to do is, is actually within a certain period of time, of course, you know, three, four sessions, able to, to uh, douse with my pendulum and tell you exactly what your health problem is. And then what I do is I use, to, to clear it out, I use uh, certain types of tools called sacred geometry, which is pyramids and spheres and different types of, of geometry. When I, I harness the, the quantum energy and I give it intent through these tools, immediately the energy changes in your body and nine times out of ten, most people feel a change with, within their health problems. So if you call me up, we're doing a session, and I'm, I'm removing uric acid crystals out of your muscles. All of a sudden, the pain starts to go away. All of a sudden, the brain fog starts to go away. Anything whatsoever, it doesn't matter what the problem is, where it is, how you got it, what the circumstances are, there are ways that I can you know, look into what exactly this health problem is. And, and that's it started with, with uh, you, know, my, you know, unfortunately, my, my first wife passing away mm -hmm. opening that door i walked in that door and I, I saw what i liked i embraced it i learned it and i developed my own system on how to heal people's health problems huh. i know what you mean my dad went through uh his cancer diagnosis alone was like two to three years of you know like ibs type symptoms and all kinds of crazy stuff going on with him and then by the time they figured out really what it was it was another couple year battle before death. And, you know, my, my girlfriend's got a variety of, of ailments right now and the, and the medical system really doesn't know what to do with her. They can't even really tell her what's going on or what's wrong. Uh, you know, all the tests sort of sort of come out positive. And uh, do you do you find that this is happening more like this, this, uh, this ambiguity from Western medical doctors or is or, or are people even having, you know, like different types of problems now that are harder to diagnose? Well, you know, that, that's, that's a broad answer to, to that question. Now, first of all, you have to realize that when there is a health problem, no matter what it is, there's always some kind of underlying energy problem. What I mean by that is some kind of dark force energy, okay? So we all know about, uh, we've all read about Lucifer and the devil in the Bible. Well, you know what? Lucifer really does exist. There, there is an energy signature of this dark force and and it really does exist and it does interact with us we're right now we're living in a world of duality light and dark good and bad right and wrong whatever you want to call it 
and and Lucifer is the dark. He is the the the, the yin of, of the yin and yang. So by being able to to remove that dark negative force, it then opens the door for the true healing to begin. So once you clear out energy wise all of this dark stuff now i've had people come into my office i've worked with people who've had pain in their bodies for 10 years they've had their gallbladder removed they've had their uterus removed they, they've done different surgeries done works i removed lucifer from this person and immediately after 10 years this person's pain went away and this happens on a daily basis within within uh, my work with with people so i know that that these dark forces do exist also that the whole realm of of outside of this planet the whole universal concept of extraterrestrials of, of dark energies and dark universes that we interact with on a daily basis do exist and it's it is something that you do have to consider Right. when you're working with energy in order to get rid of a health problem. So now the other coin, the other hat flip of the coin is uh, there's something with the medical system. I don't know exactly what it is. I think they need a knock on the head with a hard piece of oak or something because <laughs> there, there's, a, there's a concept that I find extremely often within a health problem, and that is the parasite. Okay, now parasites are worm parasites like tapeworm, roundworm. There's also a very voracious little bugger called Leishmania americana, which is a single-celled parasite that eats your body from the inside out. Okay, these things are very, very much a, a big part of all health problems. So I always say to people, if you've got a health problem that doesn't seem to want to go away, do a parasite cleanse. Do some diatomaceous earth. Take a herbal parasite syrup. Do some kind of parasite cleanse. Alkalize your body. If it doesn't go away, then it's something else. But at least you've done a parasite cleanse to see if that's a problem. So, so that is, you know, a very big part of, of what health problems are. Number one is ignorance from the medical system. I, I would say probably 80% of all cancers are misdiagnosed. If you were to do a parasite cleanse first, then all of a sudden things might start to get a little better. I'm not saying that, you know, a parasite cleanse is a cure for cancer, but it certainly is a step in the right direction. Um, and then also clearing out all of the negative energies that are involved. Now, let's, let's go a step deeper in, into negative energies. How many times a day do you think negatively about somebody so you got somebody you work with you got a family member and and this person just rubs you the wrong way or or you're jealous of them or or you want what they have or they you're this one person you're oh everybody's always talking about behind their back and and it it, it just creates this negative vortex of energy around them it's called voodoo okay when you're talking negatively about somebody you are placing a mark on their body you are in in fact signaling dark forces to come in and attack this person and create a health problem mm. and and we all do that on a daily basis oh so and so bought a new Audi he thinks he's so smart or or you know especially in the workforce where people are always vying for other people's jobs and somebody wants to do better somebody wants to see you fail so they they'll look at you funny they'll give you the evil eye and and cause the, this negative energy to envelop you and then it manifests and the key word here is manifests into a health problem hmm. yeah it's it's that intent and it's and it happens subconsciously i'm i'm guessing for a lot of people really for, for a lot of people, yes, it is some conscious. Now, there are people out there, and I know a few of them, who are actual witches who will get a lock of your hair, will get a picture of you, will get some kind of, of clothing sample or, or something of yours, and they will actually do dark seances. They will do rituals. that They will call upon their, their dark energy to inflict pain on you, to inflict illness on you. And I know of two witches, one in California, one in Puerto Rico, who I am battling right now, and I'm knocking their, knocking their socks off. I'm taking their power away, and, and, and everybody knows about these people. When, um, when I talk with my clients about, about this person, they go, oh, yeah, I know about Heidi in California. Everybody knows about these, and they know that these people do dark things. And there are cults.
cults out there. There are circles. There are different organizations that will gather, you know, every Sunday night at midnight and and burn black candles and they'll sacrifice animals. They will do uh, th these rituals to in empower themselves with these dark energies. And it happens, and it's it's really sick. And they think it's fun, but it's it's actually causing problems within people. So that is another big aspect. The voodoo, the witchcraft, the rituals actually do happen. If, if you consider, if, okay, let, let's, let's look at some things that happen in the news. If, if you, no, I was just going to actually br bring that up. Like, like, yeah. like not necessarily uh, intentional witchcraft, but what about just the, the news and the negativity coming from mainstream well, media? Here's one concept. How many people have, have uh, you know, watched the news and here's somebody in the Middle East yelling, death to infidels? Okay, right there and then, that is a curse. They are cursing the, the you know, people in, in, in the States, in, in, the Nor in North America, anybody who is not of their religion. They are cursing them. And they do this on a daily basis, and it does create a negative vortex of energy around us. Now, I'm not saying that, that uh, we should go out, out and do something to these people. All I'm saying is that, the, you know, if more thought and, and uh, empathy was put into what is being said around the planet within humanity, a lot more people will be a lot better off. And, and, you, and it goes to the depth of governments. It goes to the depth of business. If you have businesses that are clashing, businesses that are in competition with each other, they're going to be casting out these negative thoughts, these negative spells, this negativity that could create more problems. So you, you know what? We have to watch what we think. We have to watch what we say on a daily basis. Huh. Does, does somebody's personal belief in your Lucifer theory affect their healing? Like, what if, like, does it matter whether they think that that could be a, a, a cause or not? Um, ultimately, anybody who does uh, contact my, my, contract my services for healing, they're willing to listen to whatever I say because they got a problem that needs to be gone. So if, if they don't believe in Lucifer, that's fine. If, if you want to hang up the phone, that's perfectly fine. I'm never going to uh, you know, throw a, a belief system at somebody. Uh, anybody who, who is into the, the, the new age or, or the, the quantum healing type of work is going to be open to any kind of negative energies that might be there. And I've, I've found within the, my dowsing, the, the, the channeling that I do, I have found new beings that, that nobody would ever heard of. So I work at a, at a very high level. I work at a very deep level to find whatever it is that is, you know, an intricate part of your health problem. So people are extremely open-minded. People are just like, you tell me what it is, and, and I'll accept it. It's all good. Hmm. We, we should probably at some point uh, tonight try uh... – Trying to get you to 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 douse my girlfriend. Uh, she's got a rash on her face that's that's uh, not going away, and it's starting to really bother her. You know what? You 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 bring her on. We'll we'll uh, have a look. Does not she does she have to come on, or can she just be listening? It's always better. I, you well, know, she's, she's in she's in the chat listening. Yeah, if, if she could call in or, or one way or another be connected. But there's a lot of people who do distance healing, and I do a form of distance healing, but I like to have that connection. If it was your son or daughter or, or somebody with your DNA, it's a different story. I, I could work on it. But if, if she could call in, that would be a much better scenario. Okay, maybe I'll get her to call you tomorrow then. Yeah, because I don't think we'll do like like I don't think we can do a call in now. She I, she won't want to call in in the middle of the show. Okay, either. She, 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 <laughs> we can give it a, we can give it a try. Okay. Yeah, and, she says and, no calling. I pass. She says. Okay, okay. <laughs> you, you tell me when you you give me her name and her age and and uh, I I will do some dowsing and see if I can pick it out. How long have you been with her? Uh, yeah, a year and a half or so. Okay, so that's close enough. There, there's probably a, a good match of energy. So you know what? We'll give it a shot. You let me know when. Okay. Um, yeah, well, her name is Lisa. Lisa Giesbrick. Do you, where, what else do you need to know? Giesbrick. Oh, a good Mennonite. Well, that's her, that's her married name. <laughs> okay. Lisa Giesbrick. What, how old is she and what city is she in? Uh, she, well, she's in Calgary now. Do you want to know where she is now or where no, she no, lives? No, Calgary, Lisa Giesbrick in Calgary. Yeah. Okay. And how old is she? And I, uh, her name, she also goes by Maria as well, if that Perfect. makes a difference. Yeah. And she's 50. She's 50. Okay. Yeah. All right. What problem would need to work on 
within Maria. Let's see Maria. So I'm using my pendulum. I'm asking a question. It's going to spell it out on a letter chart. Okay. Saying that the problem is, problem is from <clears throat> Lishmenia within her. Okay, Lishmi. Okay, so what what is happening here? So she has a, a rash on her face, and it's most likely within underneath the eyes and the cheeks and the nose area. Okay, and it could be up in the forehead. So there is a parasite within her sinuses, and this is what's causing it. <clears throat> okay, it does come. It does. It's 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 centered around her nose. Actually, that's where yeah. it sort of started. Actually, it seemed, and now it's okay. so. So that's that's where the parasite is. So when when it, you have a parasite present, there's also a possibility of other things. There's going to be more than one problem. This is going to be a, a probably fungus, bacteria, parasite. Could also be some scar tissue, but but ultimately it, it is some type of infection within the sinuses that's coming out through the skin. Okay, now what when uh, what what the first thing that, you're, that she's going to do is put something on the skin to make it go away, and that's going to push the infection back into her body, which she thinks, oh, it's gone, but it's not gone; it's just pushed back in. Okay. So so um, what I'll do through you? Well, hey, what's your name, by the way? Graham. Graham. Okay, Graham. Nice to I'm meet Darren. you. I'm Darren. Graham and Darren. Did we not introduce yeah, that? Uh, we, 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 <laughs> no, it was when our audio was all messed up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he couldn't okay. even hear us. So. So, okay, so so um, so Graham, I want you to, to uh, picture her within your mind, and I'm going to do a clearing. Now, if she's in the chat, here's what I want her to do. I want her to chat in, and, and I want her to say when she feels a tingle or heat, or some kind of sensation change within her face or within her body, okay? Okay, okay. okay here we go. So I'm going to take my pyramid, hold it up to the computer. I'm going to say the words to remove this, this uh, infection, okay? Okay, within Marie's sinuses, neutralize and mobilize all leash media, single-celled parasites from the sinuses, nasal passages... It's going to take a second to do that. Ah, there it is. Okay, that is now leaving her body. Okay. okay. So you watch the chat. Okay. And you tell her to, to uh, say something. Just so people in the chat room know, I'm actually texting her. Like, she's not actually in the chat. We're texting back and forth while she listens. Just so everybody's clear on that so so get this chris uh just uh, while we're while we're waiting there she uh she's had like six sinus surgeries yeah a, a surgery is not going to clear out this parasite yeah, yeah. Um, and, but i mean you mentioned scar tissue as well in there so yeah. i mean yeah she's had multiple like lots of sinus problems so you know what in any time it, it's it's a problem that nothing is helping do a do a parasite cleanse. There's two very good ones. One is called Doctor Christopher's Parasite Syrup. It, it's a liquid herbal. Okay, no yeah. relation to me. And and this works extremely well on single cell parasites, also worms, and diatomaceous earth. Food grade diatomaceous earth is great for clearing parasites out of the gut. Hey, Chris. Uh, she says she's light lightheaded and shaky. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Things are working. Okay. We're getting some some change. What about uh, allergies? Like uh, people have onset allergies uh, later stages or when they get a little older. Like even myself, I didn't really have an allergy problem until I was... Uh... Podcasting? No, I was probably about <laughs> 20, 27 or 28 when it started. What I find, and everything I'm going to talk about are, are all things that I have discovered as I'm doing this and, and commonalities. So generally what I find of an allergy is an abundance of something within your body. Okay, so let, let's say you have an allergy to peanuts. Now, what is in that peanut? Uh, and it could be uh, genetically modified. There's a lot of different concepts. But ultimately, there is a, an abundance of something in your body already. So when you ingest or inhale something, it, it causes a problem. It, it, it creates too much of it, and your body tries to get rid of it. So, so you know, there's food allergies. And uh, now the, the, the food allergy thing, when you eat something, you get a reaction. Nine times out of ten, that is leaky gut syndrome. 
where where uh, your 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 bowels have a, a breach, and whatever it is you're eating is is going to be released into your body. So gluten, Glu everybody goes off of gluten, then you feel better. If that gluten is getting into your body cavity. It's going to cause a problem. It's going to cause a lot of pain within you. It's going to cause brain fog. It's going to cause a lot of, of different things. So um, the leaky gut syndrome, and generally nine times out of ten, leaky gut syndrome is a parasite in your bowel that, that has created a void uh, through the mucous membrane that protects the bowel. It holds everything in there. You don't want poop in your body. You want it through your bowel and out into the toilet. So... That that is another very big concept I work on is is leaky gut and when you're working with energy it is relatively easy if you know what you're doing to uh, to repair it and get rid of it. I just watched a webinar on uh, leaky gut syndrome for, for the, from the bulletproof guys. Uh, it was quite interesting how it does seem to be causing quite a lot of uh, different things. I get a lot of I used to eat a lot of acid reflux too, so there could be oh. holes in my gut all over the place. Well, acid reflux, you know, it, it could be H. pylori bacteria, it could be a, um, a a tumor or a cyst in your gut. It, it could be an ulcer. Uh, generally, that type of thing goes on. Now, if if you've got acid reflux, it could be a vertebrae out of place pressing on that that valve that's supposed to keep everything in your stomach instead of splashing up. So they're, they're, if you had took five people with, with uh, acid reflux, they can have it for five different reasons. Right, so right. You know, using my system would, would, would definitely dial down what exactly your acid reflux is. Huh. So I, I've got a question uh, from Maria again. So, so she did say that um, she got tested and they said she was clear of parasites, but does that mean that they're actually – finding all those ones or would you say there's a chance or still like like you said it's it's caused by a parasite and then the other question is uh should she continue that medicine that she's supposed to put on her face that the doctors gave her um well now the, the whole parasite phenomenon is you know are the doctors using the right method to find parasites or pathogens uh, the ultimate way to find out is is find somebody who does a very good live blood analysis i, I do them in my my office i do have the equipment but, uh, you know, in, uh, in Calgary, yeah, there's a lot of good people that do a good live blood analysis. She could find somebody, help her there, and, and then they would see the parasites in her blood. Okay. As far as the, the uh, medication on her face, if it's not doing any good, you're probably putting a steroid uh, on there, and steroids are just a no-no. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of what we figured. How is she feeling right now? What what is she going through? What what's what's her reaction? Uh, well, she said her heart was racing. Wow. So. Okay. So so now this parasite is in a lot more places than just her nose and sinuses. It's going to be in a lot of other places. So so ultimately, um, you know, to, to really get the problem, let me take another look. Let me take another quick look. Okay. So so it is working. She's getting a reaction. Okay. So so we are making some changes. So I'm going to go ahead and ask, where is the highest level of leech mania parasites within Maria's body? And my pendulum is going to tell me exactly where it is. Where is leech mania parasites? Okay, now I'm going to ask a you know, a personal kind of sensitive question. Yeah. Does she have issues with with her monthly cycle or anything cramping in that area at all? Anything well, like she that? She doesn't have uh, that cycle anymore. Okay. Now, being 50, yes, I understand. But was there ever a problem? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there is leishmania parasites within her uterus. Okay. So now, now, so so, did she go through the change of life, or did this get removed? Um, I'm, I should know this answer, but I don't. You should not know this answer. You don't. <laughs> um, I'm getting a. Let's see here. I'm getting a response right now. Let's see if she's. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. The uterus is gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gone. Not the response I was expecting. Okay. Now, now, why is the uterus gone? Because there is a lot of problems with her monthly cycle. Probably a lot of what they call endometriosis. A lot of, of yeah, she had that. 
yeah. excessive bleeding, and that's because of the parasite. So this parasite is going to be all over her body. I'm going to remove it from her heart. I'm going to remove it from her cardiorespiratory system, and I'm going to remove it from her entire body. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, Maria, mobilize all leishmania, single-cell parasites, within her heart, cardiopulmonary system, entire reproductive system. Now we're going to mobilize all leishmania from Maria's entire body. Entire body. Okay, give that a minute and you ask her how she's feeling. Okay, we'll do. Will do. Yeah. No, there's there's a yeah, it's it's one of those things. There's a variety of issues and the doctors have really been it's been a challenge. Well, a there's challenge. a show on, on Discovery Channel. It's called The Monsters Inside Me. And and this show uh, specifies about parasites. It's all about these parasites that are in us, and it talks about all of them. Uh, you know, hookworm and roundworm and tapeworm and amoebas and, and leishmania, all these different parasites. They talk about them. They talk about scenarios that people have gone through that, that no doctor can find. All of a sudden, they find the right specialist who's seen this before and knows what to do about it. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So what else? Uh, what, what else? Is there any foods that you can eat to just kind of preventative maintenance sort of thing or to, that'll help clear you up? Anyway. Well, now here, here's the thing with parasites. Most of the time, if there's a parasite present, and it's generally a worm parasite, it's usually there because of some kind of curse, some kind of spell, some kind of ritual. Okay, It's usually part and parcel with that. Uh, ultimately, if, if there was no negative energies around, if you picked up a parasite from eating something that was undercooked or raw or, or uh, you know mishandled, your body's immune system would be able to get rid of it. Okay. But ultimately, there's going to be some kind of underlying issue why that parasite is in certain areas of your body. Now, if, if you want to do the best you can for your body to be able to eliminate these parasites, if you kept your body's alkalinity at about 7.2, yeah. uh, an acidic body of about 5 to 5.5 or even you know 6 is, is an environment for parasites and pathogens to survive in. So now you get that environment of an acidic body, now you've got candida, you've got yeast, and you've got something for these parasites to feed off of. Huh. So, so it it just dominoes into certain areas. So, so now you've got all these different diseases and illnesses coming around that that are just because of an acidic body. So, you know, drinking lots of water is a good thing. Um, you know, if you're eating, a, you have a very acidic diet. If you're drinking lots of coffee, if you're eating lots of tomatoes, turkey is very acidic. So, so you you need to to know how to balance your body out, and that's number one is is getting the right enzymes into your body, which is you eating good, uh, not overcooked vegetables, making sure the enzymes are there. You know, you might want to take an enzyme enzyme supplement. Many people are enzyme deficient, so you can't digest these foods, and they build up in your body and create the acidic environment, and it just goes on and on and on and on. There's lots of information I'm probably preaching to a lot of the choir out there. Yeah, yeah, we've yeah, it's similar to. To some of like the bulletproof diet kind of things. So hey, I've got some uh, some feedback from her. She says, "Wow, chills and goosebumps like a wave went through her." So she's uh, again like perfect. light lightheaded and heart racing. Okay, per perfect. So she's gonna be okay. There's nothing to worry about here. Okay, we're we're dealing with true source optimal energy here, and she's gonna go through a little bit of of wow, a little bit of overwhelmment, but everything is gonna settle down and be fine. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, but she she will be just fine. So how does how does the uh, the sacred geometry plan all this? We've talked about it on the show lately quite a bit, and I was at uh, a show like a lecture on a couple weeks back with Nassim Harriman, who gets into like the quantum, you know, basically like flower of life type quantum stuff at the proton level and the at the plank you know plank mass of the proton and all this kind of stuff. But it all also connects with sacred geometry, so it seems to be connecting everywhere and how does that play into your what you're doing well yes yeah, sac sacred geometry is everywhere you can see it all around now if, if you went into the parliament building in winnipeg it is a masonic temple 
of sacred geometry. It's just everywhere. And, and, it's, and sacred geometry is certain dimensions, certain uh, uh, dimensions of a room, certain symbols are all sacred geometry. So this, the geometry that I use is, is based around the pyramid. Okay, so the the instrument that I'm using right now is called a vesica Pisces, and if you did a Google search on vesica Pisces, you might see a women's vagina. Okay, what it facilitates is is the um, feminine energy that is coming to the planet that is replacing the masculine energy, and this is all leading up to the whole energy shift of consciousness into the fifth dimension. All these different changes in energy. So the the pyramid. The, the 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 tool that I use, the sacred geometry I use, I like to describe it as number one, an antenna for, for the quantum energy, for the God energy, for all of the good energy that we can harness. I use it as an antenna and it's also an amplifier for my intent. So I say the words, I create an intent, and this energy comes in through that device, it amplifies it sends it to where it needs to go and obliterates it okay i can also add energies okay so let's let's say uh your your uh, mucous membrane of your large intestine is all worn away i can intend to send stem cells to create new mucous membranes so this thing is is a very powerful tool to take your intent and to do whatever you feel is right for that person to, to have a, a good healing Wow, that's interesting. Um, I see that here on your site too. You've got um, we talked about this recently as well. Monoatomic uh, Ormus Goldwater. Yeah, what what I do with that now? Now there's a there's a big community that that is very big into the the monatomic Ormus Goldwater, and and generally the process to make it is by extracting gold out of just general rocks and minerals you find in your backyard, and it's it's a it's a chemical process. There's a process to do it, but what I do is I have a, a source where I get my ion gold, my my single atom gold water, and I charge it with energies with with different radionic frequencies and different energies, different source energies, and when you drink this, it has the exact same effect if not better than, than just your general Ormus gold water so it, it, it's a very good water to take if, if you want to enhance your energy bodies if you want to expand your consciousness a little bit and it's also good uh, mm. on a physical level it's great for for healing cancers and different kinds of, of other illnesses within your body huh. i like expanding consciousness <laughs> Where, how do you uh how do i like can i just make that shit you can buy it. You, you can certainly buy it off off the internet. Now, the place you can buy it, it it's no secret. It's called jeffauto.com. It's a Water Oz product. You, you can go ahead and order it and buy it. Now, but charging the energies into it, that is something specific. That is something that you need knowledge. You need the equipment. You need to know what you're doing with it. So you anybody can buy the gold water, just like silver water, platinum water. You can buy it. Then we need someone to bless it. Maybe you could send us some pre-blessed. No, I'll, I'll buy I'll, I'll buy some off his site. Oh, he sells it on yeah, there? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you a bottle. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we were talking to some guests that were here in our studio, and they were trying uh, the, the gold, and, and I think it was, um, what's his name, Brian that was here, and he said is he noticed a total intuition and uh, synchronicity increase. Like, it seemed to just increase right away yeah it, it, that that's what it does it does expand your consciousness and and when we talk about consciousness we can also use the word awareness we can use the word intuitiveness you know all these different things that that, that come into play when when you're when you're connecting on, on a multi-dimensional level it, it, it certainly uh, enhances things how is is uh, your girlfriend doing right now she says uh she says thank you from the bottom of her heart she said uh, she loves what we're doing and and what we're doing for all the people out there. Well, you know what? I would certainly recommend that, that she books an appointment, and we'll go deeper with this because there is a lot more to do than, than just what we did. This is a good demonstration and good feedback, but there, we definitely need to go a little deeper. One more session, two sessions would, would certainly do it. Yeah, sure. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what else was I going to mention? Um so, so the you know obviously putting the name quantum in there it can can ring some bells for the skeptical community and all that too, right? How do you deal with uh, how do you deal with the 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 materialistic paradigm that we're still living in? Like, do do you how do you how do you uh, not let that get to you? 
Well, uh, ultimately, I don't deal with it. Now, there's always going to be the skeptic. There's always going to be people that, that, that look at you kind of weird and give you this stink eye and say, <laughs> okay, Chris, good luck with that. And, and I just say bless you and, and, you know, thank you for listening. I, I don't expect anybody to believe this. I don't expect people to, to, to be coming in droves to, to see what I'm doing. All, all what I do on, on, a, on a, you know, a level of advertisement or, or putting this out there is here it is. Here's my website. Here's my YouTube channel. If this resonates with you, come on and see me. That way I don't have to prove anything to anybody. Yeah. You're already convinced it's going to work for you. And you've given me permission to work with you. So anybody who's skeptic, bless you. You know what? You have your own free will. Go ahead and think whatever you want. I'm not going to criticize you for, for saying, oh, I'm going to go see the doctor instead. That That's perfectly fine. If you really want to help, come see me. If you're skeptic, don't come see me. I don't want to see you. What are some of the experiences you've heard from people uh, that, that you've helped? Oh my goodness, uh, that that goes very 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 deep. Um, if if you went on on my Bookfresh channel, um, I, I use Bookfresh as a, a booking agent on my website, and I've, I've got a testimony page on there, and it is jam packed. Uh, you know what? It it goes to so many different levels. Uh, I'm going to talk about one client I have in Scotland. Okay, this, this chap's name is Duncan Maltman. He's, he's a very good friend of mine, and he appeared on me with on a Caravan to Midnight with John B. Wells about four weeks ago. Okay. And this guy was a quadrant. Okay, I've been working with him quite a bit now. now it's, you know, to take somebody from being a quadriplegic to almost walking is, is a great feat. So we have been working uh, on a weekly basis, and he is now able to use his hands, he's able to move his legs and move his feet, and he's able to stand. So, so there is um, a, a lot of progress that has been made, and he hasn't been doing anything else. He doesn't take medications, he doesn't go to the doctors, he, he seeked me out, he found me three times, he says, okay, this has to be the guy. And, and we are helping him, and and he keeps on doing sessions because it's he knows it's working. Uh, another case I'm working with is an autistic child in I believe it's Colorado. I'm not sure. He's about 11, 12 years old, and his teachers are amazed at the progress he's making. His parents are are just amazed at the progress he's making. He's, he's gone from somebody who's been very difficult to deal with in a schoolroom issue. Uh, he used to be a biter and 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 be very very, very disruptive. Now he will actually participate. His, his uh, speaking voice is starting to become clearer. So there has been very, very big strides made made within him. And, and the list just does go on and on and on. You know, you talk about diabetes, asthma, you know what, any kind of heart problem, any kind of heart problem, the heart is the easiest thing to work on in the body because it only does one thing it pumps blood the liver does 20 different things the brain does a million different things so i work on many many heart problems and generally any kind of heart disease turns out to be a darn parasite huh. it's so, just by doing the same thing with your girlfriend so this works for chronic issues as well as stuff that just just pops up in people's lives well, anything that's chronic, I've been there a long, long time, it's going to take longer to work on it because ultimately more and more uh, problems are going to arise from the, the beginning of that problem. So if you've had MS for 50 years, okay, it's going to take a while to get you back to mobile, okay, because there's a lot of repair work to be done, a lot of clearing, and it tends to be clearing after clearing after clearing. Now, there are certain cases that are extremely hard to figure out and find because there's a lot of people we call them star seeds we call them light workers and and they are our uh, their souls their spirits are from different dimensions different realities and they've come here to help in the ascension process and to help humanity and some of them have come here to hide because they're being sought after by the let's call it the universal police so we, we need to, to do a lot of work to figure out exactly what's going on with these people. But ultimately, we do come to a conclusion, and we do start to make a difference. Now, everybody is different. Everybody's health problem is different. Uh, you know, five times out of ten, we might get an instant healing right away where you don't need any more work. One or two sessions is done. Sometimes you need 20, 50 sessions, not usually 
but everybody is so different with, with their issue, depending on how chronic it is, de depending on, on you know how many medications they're taking, depending on what they've done, uh, depending on how many curses and spells, and, and you know the list goes on and on. And that's why it can be so difficult to figure out a health problem because there's so many things that can be involved with it. What's the radionic feedback? Um, is that is that just a, a way of dowsing? Well, radionics is is um, uh, a form of using frequency. So um, it, it's not so much an intuitive source form of, of working with energy, but it is working by canceling frequencies with, within the body. And uh, a lot of people know about the Skeel machine, the, the, the Indigo. I have one called, a, it's a... a, a EQ 1111 and it works with water frequency so the water vibrates at a certain frequency so when you put you have a machine you put different uh, vials of water in, into, the, into a, the machine and as you put them in it cancels out certain vibrations in the first vibration that you put in which is the, the, the host vibration so by using radionics you, you can uh, add a frequency to something you can remove a frequency for something I get a lot Lot better results with with my other form of healing with the dowsing with a pendulum and using the sacred geometry than I do with radionics. Radionics can be very hit and miss. Okay, so there are a lot of people who get success. A lot of people don't get success. I like to use my radionics to charge uh, uh, holographic wristbands, silicon wristbands, with different frequencies that I sell on my website to help people with sleep, to help balance female hormones, to help brain function, and different things like that. I like to use that to charge with. But radionics is has been around a good hundred years, and, and there's a lot of a lot of people who know a. A very high level about it who are just so in tune with it they can make it work now what happened is is I became the radionic machine where it, whereas instead of taking the machine and, and taking the little vials of water and putting them them in one at a time I would just touch a person's body envision the vials going in and all of a sudden their, their pain would go away so uh, radionics is a, a form of energy it is something that is very viable, something that does work, but it all depends on the person using it and the machine itself. Now, machines, let's talk briefly about machines. There's a lot of people who have these types of Rife machines, radionic devices, yeah, yeah. quantum lasers, you name it. There's a, there's a lot of different devices. These devices can be infiltrated by dark forces, so as you use them, you're taking in a dark force consciousness within you. You might be getting rid of that problem that you want, but you're causing another problem within. So if you're using a device, um, if, if you're intuitive, you know, if you, you can take that device and clear it out. I was one just going to say, how do you do that? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I, I do it quite often for, for people, and, and all they've got to do is, is call me up and, and say, I'm holding my, my Q laser. Can you test it for me and, and I will test it. I'll move out Lucifer. I'll move out, you know, dark energies. And then you can use that laser. You can use that device a lot more safely. So that, that makes me think of uh, people's places like, you know, <clears throat> cleansing it with um, sage and that type of thing. Salt. Like, yeah. Do you, do, you, do you do people's homes as well? I mean, it seems like I, it might be able to yes. work for that. Well, yes. Home, homes are very important to clear because if, if your home is over a ley line or if, if there is a stream of water that runs underneath it, it can create a geopathic stress. A lot of cancers can be contributed to geopathic stresses or, or, or water that runs under your house, and it creates a, a, a negative vortex of energy. Um, also, there can be interdimensional portals that, that come in through your house, that, that uh, interdimensional beings, the gray aliens, the reptilians, the archons, whatever, the XYZs are coming in and out, and, and they're using your house as, as a doorway to get into this planet. And that creates a stress within you. We can also have gateways, stargates, and portals within our own bodies. Let's, let's say you're a person with a perfectly healthy heart. You eat perfectly, you exercise to the T, and you're always, always, always making sure you're healthy. All of a sudden, you're having little minor heart attacks. What up with that? If that heart chakra 
is being used as a, a stargate or a portal. It's causing stress on the heart, and it can cause these minor little heart attacks. So the whole energy concept has to be considered when, when you're talking about any kind of issue within your body. Depression is, is, a, is a very big one. Let's talk briefly about depression. How many people listening out there right now have depression? Raise your hands. Oh, my God, look at all of you. Okay, now, depression. Clinical deep depression. There is an area in our brain called the hippocampus. Mm -hmm. This is where your soul is. There's an area in our brain called the parietal occipital lobe. This is where your well of soul is. These two areas are connected energetically. If you take a blow to the head, let's say you're a professional hockey player, and you take many blows to the head, all of a sudden, you get depressed, you get suicidal, you end up taking your life, you're doing lots of drugs. That's because when these two areas disconnect, you yourself disconnect from your soul, and that is a, a very, very big contributor to any types of depressions and anxieties. So within the work that I do, because I work at this level, I'm able to reconnect the soul to the well of souls, reconnect you to your soul. All of a sudden, almost immediately, joy starts to come back in. You feel lighter. You feel brighter. You feel as if a cloud is lifted from you. So depressions, you know, many, many people are given antidepressants on, on a daily basis, and it drives me crazy because it's almost impossible to get off of them because you, you're going to detox in such a harsh manner. So, so by reconnecting the soul, all these different levels, it does make that big of a difference. So that, that's like the physiological um, response or, or to people having sort of spiritual experiences maybe or actually like awakening spiritually, for lack of a better term. Maybe that's exactly what's actually going on in there. Well, you know, awakening is, is one thing, and it, sometimes it takes just the right little trigger to, to, to awaken. I've seen many people uh, awaken all of a sudden, and all of a sudden they're running into my office going, I know what you do, and I love what you do, and I want to be part of it. All of a sudden, I know this is all great stuff, and, and uh, you know, it's fantastic, uh, <laughs> you know, for the awakening. My awakening happened in, in 2007, okay, when, when I just walked into somebody's office, and, and all of a sudden this all happened. So, so my awakening awakening was, was a certain process. And everybody has a story of, of their awakening, of their journey, of, of their way they got here. And, and it is, it's, it's interesting to hear because it, it is s such a, a change of events. All of a sudden, you're thinking differently. You're, you're, you're looking at things differently. You're, you're looking at the stars differently. And, and your life is, is such a, you know, a more pure, toned down, less stress, more love, uh, you know, type of life. And, and, you know, the whole awakening process is, is happening at, at a very astounding level right now because we're getting so close to this whole component of ascension, of, of the fifth dimension coming in and, and uh, awakening our consciousness. Now, a lot of people, when they are awakening, all of a sudden they're having they might have a seizure. You might have a, a tidy stroke. You might have a very big period of dizziness. You might have some illness because your body is going through some shock, okay, depending on how it happens. And generally when it happens, your soul is disconnecting from one source and plugging into another, and it can create shock within your body. I've seen it. I've had people come in and say, what the heck just happened? I had a seizure. The doctors can't find anything. I says you're ascending. You're waking up. Your 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 energy is changing, and that is what happens with a lot of people. A lot of people get aches and pains. Flu-like symptoms is, is very common. But some people do go through a very very big, let's say a, a, a knock on the back of the head with a two by four. Wow. <sighs> just as Darren dropped his e-cigarette or whatever you call that. <laughs> what is that? A vaporizer. E sig. As soon as you heard e knock on the, yeah. yeah, that's good synchronicity. That's my sound effects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you have hope for us then? Like you talk about the awakening and our consciousness expanding and the ascension and all that. I mean, when I think of big pharma, the military industrial complex, and the global banking system, that's what kind of makes me. You know, it kind of worries me and it, it kind of gets me concerned. And then I think about all the people that we talk to and the community that we are a part of with the show and people that are you know, realizing that there's something out there. What What's your feeling about all that? Do we have, well, are we still on the precipice or? 
the, 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 the precipice, I think, has come and gone. And, and um, I, I think what's, what's happening now is, is a lot of the conspiracy is, is starting to come around. You know, you look on Facebook and you look on YouTube and everybody is, is saying, oh, look, I see Nibiru in that place where, where uh, Google Sky had a big black spot. And, and uh, oh, Nibiru is coming and we're going to die. And it's like, get off it, people. Conspiracy is, is what sinks ships. And, 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 you know, ultimately governments want lots of a conspiracy because when something really does happen, nobody's going to believe it. All of a sudden there's disclosure about um, aliens and that aliens are here. I mean, there's just zero doubt, just a matter of the government saying, okay, everybody, yeah, 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 they're here. <laughs> We're working with them. We, we have their technologies and blah, blah, blah. You know, nobody's going to believe it because there's so much conspiracy. I mean, that the, the, the shooting of those two reporters, you look on Facebook and it's a conspiracy. Oh, it's a false flag event. You know what? I went to the bathroom the other day. I looked in the toilet and I thought, oh, this has to be a false flag event because... Somebody you know, forgot to flush. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know, set up. So it's very important not to get caught up in, in the conspiracy, the lies, the deceit that, that people just love playing with and playing with our minds and, and causing uh, discussion and ruckus. Um, you know, the, the, right now the big thing that, that people are talking about is at the end of September is, is another blood moon, which is an eclipse. It's, it's, a, it's a solar eclipse, a lunar eclipse. And they're, they're saying that this wave X is coming in. Okay, well, what the heck is wave X? Well, Simon Parks talks about it. There's other few other people that talk about it, that there's going to be this very big shift and a lot of destruction is going to happen. You know what's going to happen? Absolutely nothing, brother. The only thing that's going to happen is consciousness is going to change a little bit more. Um, what I keep getting from my work is that my work is going to enhance very greatly where I'm going to be able to help more people. So it's all about consciousness shift. Every time there's a full moon, a super moon, there's consciousness shift. More and more people wake up. More and more people realize, hey, wait a minute, I think the government is pulling something over our eyes. So that people are looking with, with more wide eye at, at the alternative news stations and, and you know, shutting off uh, the CBC and, and all that crap that nobody wants to hear or talk about anymore. And more and more people are starting to realize, I think there's something going on here that I need to research. Okay, you, you look at... Uh, there's uh, so much proof out there about uh, a race of beings on this planet called the Nephilim, which is a race of beings of humans that were here way before us. They had elongated heads. They were very tall. They had multi rows of teeth, blah, blah, blah. And they're finding their skeletons all over the world. Okay, and these are they're like 16, 18, 20 foot skeletons. And, you know, there, there's, there's, organizations that will come around and destroy these things. They don't want proof of all of this stuff. The you Smithsonian. Know, the Smithsonian, exactly. So, and I, uh, on my radio show, I think it's uh, in two weeks, I've got somebody on my show. We're going to talk who did a lot of work about uh, uh, researching the Nephilim. So that's we're going to be talking about that. It is a reality. It is something that's there. It's something we need to, we don't have to deal with it because it's come and gone. Just like the dinosaurs are come and gone. They're not here anymore. It doesn't matter. Because we're humans, we, we are so caught up in, in, in knowing everything everything about everything okay there was dinosaurs why did they when did they die doesn't matter they died okay get over it it's time to think about what's happening in your life right now the nephilim yeah it's something that i think we should know about is it going to really change anything no is it really going to create such a very big uh, social uh, uh, disaster? No. It's just something that we need to accept. And, and if you believe it, great. If not, don't worry about it. Go on with your life and do something good for somebody. Yeah, I just right, right, right lately I've been thinking about how to sift through all this. Uh, and I don't really need to know the truth, to be honest with you. I've been thinking about this this phrase lately where it's it's more about the acknowledgement of the mystery that's important to me instead of finding the truth. I think the truth a lot of times is kind of elusive and subjective. But but um it's it's the paid it's the amount of paid trolls and the like the internet's good. It's awakening I think I, things are shifting because of it, but there's also so much garbage on there and a lot of it, like thousands and thousands of people paid to 
to troll and put disinformation out there, eh? Darren, what's going to happen here when, when, you know, <laughs> Darren's laughing at me. <laughs> the army of trolls. Yeah, I mean that's that that could shift things in the in the really in a really bad way. I mean, like like Chris was saying, now people don't know. Now people won't believe it when it does. You know, when it does happen, right? You, you got to believe what's in your heart. And, you know, I always tell people, if you need to make a decision, if you need to to know what is the right thing to do, there's something called thinking heart-mind. If you're thinking mind-heart, then you're always trying to logically trying to decipher something. Well, what's the good points, bad points? You know, how can this exist on, on you know, in a physical level, you know, using physics and math? Uh, but if you used your heart to think, does it feel good in your heart? To, to that, if you look at a picture of, of Nephilim in your heart, does, does that tell you that they exist or they didn't exist? And, and, and you know, everybody can, can do this. And, and you know, here, here's a prime example. So, so my, what, my new wife and I, we, we started having kids and we got a, a, a boy. So the thought comes, okay, do we circumcise my son? And the thought was, well, okay, daddy is, so shouldn't. Shouldn't Junior look like Daddy? It's like, well, why does Junior have to look like Daddy? Well, he's going to look and say, well, how come I have this and you don't? In my heart, it felt right not to do it. So we didn't do it. Okay. So if you can think with your heart, how does it feel in your heart about things? How does it feel in your heart uh, about things you see on the Internet? Do you look at that and go, Pff. you know, that tells me right there that you're not going to even look at it. So, so always... You know, think about things with your heart. Don't try and, and buy into everything. I, I've got some people, oh, my goodness, bless our hearts, that they call in every day and say, oh, what's going to happen when this big asteroid hits the planet at the end of September? I, I says, well, I guess we're all going to die now, aren't we? You know, there's going to be no big asteroid because they saw it on the Internet because some idiots are talking about this big asteroid that's going to hit. It's not going – there's nothing going to hit. As they talk about, it's called a, a Comet 1770. Well, this Apophis. What about Apophis? That motherfucker's coming. But that's not for another, like, 10 years, I think, or 15 you know years or so. And, and you know what? It's not going to hit us. It, it's just not going to happen. OK, if, if it does, well, I'll see you on the other side. Don't worry about it because there's nothing you can do about it. Right. So, so how do you get to your heart then? Because we, we've like this comes up quite a bit as well, like getting out of your head and getting into your heart. And I think for guys, especially that are that don't have touch with their feminine, it's sexist, like their feminine side. No, it's true. Like there's, you know, like I think the guys feel just like women do, but sometimes they're in their masculine and not their feminine. I mean, there's all this. The stuff. So, how do you suggest people get to feel in their well, heart? You know, n number one is just by doing it on a daily basis and becoming accustomed to doing it. Okay, and and being aware of 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 how it feels, how things feel in your heart. Now, okay, so here's an example. We've all had a relationship where somebody said, "I don't want to be with you anymore." All of a sudden, you're heartbroken. You've got this feeling in your heart. It's just aching and, and it just won't go away that's that's the heart chakra closing up so so we all know what it feels like to feel with your heart so start using that on a daily basis okay there's also something um i, I was watching a ron armatron video and he does this thing called a mind drop and and we're going to we're going to do it right now with you guys so i want you to to just kind of close your eyes and we're going to count from 10 down to 1 and we're going to drop all of your thoughts from your mind into your heart here okay, we go okay 10, 10 9 8 7 6 so you're now in your throat 5 4 3 2 1 all your thoughts are now within your heart how does your heart feel hmm a little fuller. A little fuller. There's, there's something there. Something changed, didn't it? Darren, what about you? Uh, Nothing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nothing? I wasn't ready. I, was, <laughs> I thought the countdown would go fast and slower. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try that again. So that's that's uh, Ron Armatron's video for the heart drop. No, the head drop? Yeah, the, the, the mind drop. The mind drop. Yeah. Okay, no, I see that. That's what I was talking about. That's a technique you could get used to using, and it probably gets you out of your head. Like, go, you know, be, mi be mindful, and then just like push it all down your heart to help meditate. I was a wrestler, I'd, I'd do the mind drop as my finishing move. <laughs> that's funny. 
So what about your own personal practice? Do you have any anything uh, that you do? Like, do you have a spiritual practice at all? Do you meditate, float tank, anything like that? Well, my, my uh, I was brought up uh, a strict Mennonite, okay? The, the name Kaler, Giesbrecht, they're, they're all Mennonite names, okay? <laughs> I, I, was, I was brought up. Uh, you know, in a strict Mennonite type of type of situation where you went to church every Sunday and and you know only certain things were acceptable and you know as I grew up I, I you know very early uh, as as a child I realized I did not like church I did not like going there I did not like it just did not feel right um, so so my you know, vocation now, let's call it, is spiritualist. So I believe that that there is a spirit out there that watches over us, that created us, and is looking after us, okay? So there's a spiritual component. My meditation, uh, now lots of people ask me about meditation. How do you meditate? How do I clear my head? How do I become one with Zen and become blah, blah, blah? My meditation is when I take my pendulum and I start asking questions on my letter chart. I talk with my, my higher self and it gives me information that I need. Some people can, can sit cross-legged for a couple hours and completely clear the mind and become transcendental and, and virtue off into different astral realms, which is not a good thing to do because you're going to come back with some kind of attachment. Okay, but but there, a lot of people meditate in different ways. Some people go for a walk. Some people read a book. Whatever takes you out of your headspace, whatever whatever kind of gives you a little bit of peace during the day, that that can be considered your meditation. And and it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, you can take a hundred people; they're going all going to meditate a hundred different ways. So, some people will sit in the bathroom and have a good poop. That's your meditation. Okay, what, whatever it is, whatever works for you. Darren's changed from smoking to shitting now, I guess. Hey, Darren? <laughs> I still got my vape. <laughs> you got your vape? That's my your motorcycle meditation? motorcycle is my meditation. Yeah, that's true. You got your motorcycle, yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good answer, Chris. I like that. That's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's whatever, in, in some ways, whatever you're present with, uh, you know, relaxing and present, really, that's, it could be as simple as that. It can be. Yeah. So is there anything else that we've, uh, that we've kind of glossed over that you want to talk about, uh, before we wrap it up, um, now the work that I'm doing, I am offering it as a course, and and uh, there's a lot of people who, who call me up and they ask, "Do you teach?" And, and the answer is yes. And the you know the basic charts that I have and and the the uh, uh, sacred geometry, I do sell it to people, and and I do take you by the hand and walk you through it, and teach you how to use it to help people, teach you how to use it to set up a business if you want. And, and you're going to succeed with it because if I can do it, you know, anybody can, can really do it, okay? So I've gone through all the hard stuff. I spent eight, nine years developing it. It's developed. It's ready to go. And I'm going to teach you everything that I've learned along the way so that you can take it and you can help humanity because, you know, the, the planet's a big place. It's, it's, it's very difficult for, for just a few people to uh, – to, to help so the, the course is on my website it is a couple thousand dollars but believe me it's it's worth it if you my rates i charge 60 bucks an hour right now if you look at my schedule it's completely full uh, nine hours a day if you do the math okay chris is doing pretty darn good so it, it is possible to turn this into something that you can sustain a, a lifestyle and help your family and uh, also help uh, you know your your friends, your neighbors, humanity, uh, worldwide, if, if you will. So, so I, I am offering that to anybody. That's a reasonable charge as well, hourly wise. I mean, geez, we've we've had healers on here before. We've done different types of healing on the show for sure, and and some of them have been you know a couple hundred bucks. So, oh, you know what? There, I I've, I went on the internet the other day, and I saw one guy who charges six hundred bucks for a fifty minute session. Yeah, you know, and it's like, dude, get over yourself. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. yeah, just it's just people, just people can't afford that. Like, yeah, just... some people are a couple thousand, and they only cater to the rich and famous. And it's like, well, your ego is, needs needs more work than anything else. If <laughs> that's the case, you know, I, I like to keep it reasonable because ultimately, if you if you if you're ill, there's a good chance you're not working. There's a good chance you haven't got money. Okay, and the way society is right now, the the way the financial system is, a lot of people just don't have money. And in order for them to get a leg up, they need to get over their health problems so they can go back to work. So exactly. I want to help. 
oh yes, I, I want to help people. I want to get people motivated and going again. I want people to realize there's validity to this work. It's not just a, a flash in the pan. Somebody's got a one-trick pony. Some somebody can can uh, you know muster up some energy and cause a healing. This goes so deep. I work within people's law of attraction. If you got bad luck. If you got nothing but but bad jobs that come your way, if you're really bad with money, I've worked with people's law of attraction to get it working properly so you can manifest things in your life. Everything is about manifestation. Okay, if you can envision something, you can create it. My wife and I are, are in a brand new house right now that we manifested, we thought about, this is what we want in this house. And we looked on the internet and there's this house. It's like, let's go have a look at it. She goes, okay. We looked in 10 minutes. We said, here's our offer. And we bought the house right away without even selling our old house. It's like, we need to have this house. We manifested it. This is our house. So I, I worked a lot with people in, in that respect. Um, a third of all my clientele are other healers, people who get very sick because of the work they're doing. They're drawing in some energies, and then they attach on. I'm able to help clear them out. So basically, anything that you can think of that is a problem in your life, there's a 99% chance that, that the system that I have can work with it, clear it out, and make it work properly for you. Nice. I like it. Yeah, well, thanks thanks for coming on. I noticed you also have some other stuff on your website, too, the Oregon-type uh, energy generators, it looks like. I've Chi got generators, generators that, that have, I've got a guy in Lopez Island, Washington, who, who creates it. He does a very good job. I brought him on for a supplier. Nice. There's, there's a glass, gold, a white gold powder pendant in, in glass, okay? Now, we talked about Ormus Gold. This pendant has white powdered gold within it and there's a ton of radionic charges i have another guy in, in the states a young guy who's a radionic whiz who he's an actually he's a glass blower these things are handmade in glass this isn't epoxy and plastic and these things are fantastic so everything i have on my website is tried tested and true and it works phenomenal i just want the water for before podcasting yeah that's <laughs> To raise your consciousness before well, podcasting? Well, well whilst right podcasting. On, whilst, right can on. I make coffee with it? Uh, you know what? You can do anything you want with it, my friend. <laughs> there <Perfect>. you go. <laughs> Put it in your bong. That, uh, <laughs> that was coming next, I'm sure. <laughs> I thought that, but I wasn't going to throw it out there. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming on, Chris. It was great chatting with you, and, and I hope you know. Hope you do yeah, really I'm well out, with your business. And I'm all out that. in Winnipeg quite a bit, so yeah, you should drive by and stop yeah, in this place. Maybe yeah. I'll pop in next time I'm there with the digital recorder and do a session and yeah. do another interview. That's a good idea. You, you let me know. I'll be there for you. I'm on Saint Anne's Road, right near Saint Patel Center. So perfect. Yeah, yeah. My sister has a farm out there, so I'm there usually once a year in the summer. Moo. Yeah. <laughs> Moo earns. <laughs> Right on, buddy. I'll link, I'll link to all your stuff in the show notes here. And, uh, yeah, thanks again. And good luck. Many in. blessings to the two of you. Thank you so much for having me on. It was a delight. Great. And thanks yeah. for doing that healing on Maria, too. And thanks for bearing with our technical demons. Yeah. yeah. All right. Take care, buddy. Take care. And welcome back to the Grand America Show. That was our chat with Chris Kaler. What did you think? I liked it, man. Yeah, I like I like giving enough space for these people uh, who are trying different healing modalities. Absolutely, there's something to it, yeah. man. Like some, it yeah. resonates with some people. So I'm not gonna, you know, be overly skeptical about it. I think it's uh, it's good that people are, are are into this stuff. I'm not overly skeptical. I'm skeptical. No, not no, overly skeptical. I'm, you know what I but, mean. But. Because we have a lot of listeners that, you know. Exactly. That, uh, you got to get out of the way and let them. Yeah. Let yeah, the story man. go. And maybe well, I'm interested to hear in a week where follow up with Maria. Yeah. And see where she's at yeah, after. Definitely. Are you going to, are you going to spring for the sessions? Yeah, probably. I mean, I, yeah, I, I did at EFT. EFT, she had some real good success with EFT for about a month. That was pretty And good. the monatomic gold. Yeah.
Yeah, I definitely want to get some water. Of that. Yeah, just that. fucking chug it. No, see? <laughs> just drink like three bottles of a monotonic hangover. <laughs> get all clogged up. Exactly. Get all bunged up. <laughs> fucking just tear your fucking ass to shreds when you got to pass it. All the cold comes uh, together. So what about that cleanse? You going to do that for your, maybe that would help your heartburn there? Yeah, I'm gonna, your, I'm, gonna try, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try a cleanse. Mm. The the fucking gut scraper. Yeah, was, didn't he mention a couple there that I should link to? Or yeah, that you should look at. Yeah, I don't I'm know if he one. had the cleanse or if he was talking about. I think yeah, he mentioned. I think I put. I'm gonna try one out anyway. I'm gonna try because I was already looking at doing one of those gut cleanses. Yeah, try the wild rose. Wild rose. Yeah. Says him or says you? Says a friend of mine. And I know, I know other people that have. Because if you get a bad one, you're in fucking trouble. You just get the shits what? for a, a couple cleanse? weeks. Yeah. yeah, it'll be good. Wild Rose is good. I, I know a lot of people that have used it. Okay, comes yeah. with you. Comes Graham recommended. That's right. Did they fucking give you some free ones to mention it on the show, you prick? And you're not sharing. I don't yeah. even know what, like who makes no. it. I think it, it's just a it's recipe, buddy. It's not a, like you, you don't buy it. It's a recipe. Yeah, it's just like a recipe. Like like here, you make your ginger drink. And you have that like three times a day, and then you eat this kind of stuff, and then that's your cleanse. Like, you're not buying it off the shelf. No, I don't buy something off the shelf. Well, why? Because why not? You... Same way I want to eat psychedelics instead of meditating. No, that's wrong. It's the same way you want to eat natural psychedelics instead of acid. That's the comparison you're supposed to be using. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Head over to grammarica.ca slash support and find out how you can help keep us ad and sponsor affiliate free. And um, email, shoot us an email if you want to blog. We're always looking for bloggers. Shoot us an email with your shit for Gram. Yeah, spam Gram. Yeah. Yeah, like anything, lucid dreams, synchronicities, stuff we like to talk about on the show involving the listeners and in this non-judgmental and open-minded platform that we have for people. So UFO experiences, whatever, man, we're, we'll, uh, we'll talk about it on the show. Yeah. Sign up for the newsletter, grammarica.ca slash news. If you haven't already, uh, a lot of you haven't. So why not do that today and, uh, review leave, the show, leave a voicemail, review the show, help us call back from our one star ratings and uh, get back up where we should be. <laughs> What else did I want to say? Oh yeah, in September, tell a friend about a show. Tell a no, tell a friend about this show or any other show for that matter. But throw this show in there too, and uh, see if we can't keep uh, stay on the stay on the up and up. So, thanks. Tell your friends about this show. Right on. Thanks for listening, guys. We will see you next week.
I'm a rambling gram with synchronicities all over the web. And Darren is skeptical about everyone and don't believe it yet. <laughs>